Okay, very good. Um, now it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Marlene Schentelight, uh, who also is a fairly recent acquisition for this faculty. Um, she studied Egyptology, Papyrology, and, uh, and German studies, Germanistic in Trier, where she uh, did her graduate studies, the MA in 2000, and then um, she went on doing a doctorate at uh, Würzburg, and after which she held various positions at Göttingen, Heidelberg, and again in Würzburg. And then finally she moved to Oxford in September uh, 2019. So more or less at the same time as John, so we um, started starting in Michaelmas term uh, 2019, when she became Associate Professor of Egyptology and Coptic Studies at Oxford, and also a Fellow of University College. Um, her research interests uh, include demotic and Greek uh, papyrology, and uh, also especially social economic history of Greek or Roman Egypt, um, and other related topics. Um, her publications include various monographs on, I notice particularly these demotic documents, uh, such as the three volumes on the such documents from Dime, uh, which were published from uh, 2006 to 2010. And then I think brings us quite naturally to today's conversation, where you know, Marine will be in conversation with Professor Martin Goodman about her new book project, which is also based on this particular site. So I'm happy to leave the floor. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I'm very glad to speak about my new book project um, here, and it is connected with the DIME, um, with the DIME volumes, as you said. So this book project um, is uh, so planned in two volumes. So one volume will be an um, edition volume of text, and I will come, that, uh, come to that later in a, in a minute. Um, and the second volume will be the analysis, the, so the study of, um, of the text published in the edition volume, but also other texts. Um, and I think for, for giving an idea of, of the text, um, I have to give you an idea of the settings so of the time and of the place where the texts are coming from. So we are, um, time-wise, we are in the Greco-Roman period, so about... Um, well, um, second century BC to uh, second century AD, roughly. Um, and the place is Dime, um, also called Sognopionesos. This is the, the Greek um, name of this um, village name, of this toponym. So Sognopionesos is the, literally the island of Sognopios. Um, and Dime is um, a kind of abbreviation of Tamai, so the, the island. Um, and this place is situated on the north of the Fayum Lake of the Bigot Karun, so it's not in the Nile Valley. Um, it's, um, the temple um, there is not one of the big uh, famous temples like Edfu or Karnak or Dendera, but um, for this um, uh, hinterland, um, I learned this German word in English, uh, for this hinterland it's a, it's a quite huge temple and um, there were excavations going on in the 19th century and now um, made excavating by, um, excavated by um, Italian um, colleagues since I think 20 years. So um, yeah, as I said we are not in the Nile Valley. The temple um, Perhaps you have seen on the poster there the, the, the ruins of the temples. You, you, you can see there they, um, these buildings are from, um, we think, 100 BC to 50 AD. Um, and the material which was found there um, is Demotic and Greek papyri and Ostraka also. So fits perfectly, of course, to my research focus. Um, Greek and Demotic, so why Greek? We have, uh, of course, during the, um, or after the conquest of Alexander the Great, um, Greek was introduced as the administration, langu or the language in administration for the higher administration and then later on also the middle, like the middle level of the administration. 
Um, so people had to um, document and to write in, in two different languages, so in Demotic and in, in Greek. Um, the specific material I'm, my, my book project, project is based on is for the, like for the study volume, these are the, the contracts, mm, mostly house selling contracts, um, sales of plots of lands. Um, these demotic contracts um, are written, like the parties are priests from this temple, from this specific Sokhna Pius temple. Um, then we have uh, lists on Ostraka, mostly, um, like um, mm, allocation lists, um, attendance lists, also some receipts. Um, then we have um, receipts on papyrus, um, receipts for rations, for salaries in money and in kind, uh, for the priests, but also for individuals, we think, that they are workmen or craftsmen dependent on the temple. Um, then one, so contracts, receipts and Osaka were published in the three volumes you just mentioned. Um, and then there is um, one bulk of material. These are account, accounts, so lists of accounts. And this was the project I started in Würzburg before I came to Oxford. So I, I uh, just could um, work th with this material for one year. It's very, very interesting. So we have about 850 inventory numbers of these account lists and some are two meters long, these scrolls, or th uh, two, uh, two and a half meters long. So um, as a material as such, of course, it's boring, it's very dry, but if, if you have a lot of these scrolls, it's so interesting. And together with all the other material and to the agreements, I will spoke about them now, um, these agreements, um, they're really a, a, a treasure um, for our knowledge of the um, administration and the, the e economy uh, of the Dima Temple, and this is my focus, of course. So these agreements um, are written regulations between the priesthood as a whole and on the other side as, like, as party B, um, priestly functionar functionaries. Um, so the scribe of the priest, um, priests who are acting as um, tax collectors, directors of temples, sanctuaries and so on. And um, like a second party um, craftsman uh, work, workmen who work or run business uh, businesses um, dependent on the temple, like the ferry service or the bakery, the brewery, this is the, the same in, in Egypt, in Egyptian temples, um, like the dyeing workshop or the dressmaker's workshop. And these regulations are saying what are the rights and the duties of these priestly functionaries, of these craftsmen, of these workmen. So, and I. Um, so in this edition volume, I will um, publish transliteration, uh, translation, transliteration, commentary, and so on, uh, 40 or 50 of these agreements. And this is um, this text genre we just have from Sogno Pionese, from Lima. We don't know this material, this text type from other um, um, villages or, or cities in, in Egypt. And in this study volume, I will bring them, I hope, all together <laughs> and then um, study the administration and economical system of the Dima Temple. <laughs> Thank you. Right, that's a great work you are <coughs> in the middle of. Um, can, can we uh, start from where you ended? Yeah. That, that, that these are only found here at Dime. Is that because there's something special about the site? Or mm -hmm. something special about the way things are preserved? Mm -hmm. So yeah, this is a um, very um, important topic. Um, so of course we have economic, so um, papyri and ostraca connected to economy, also from other temples. But it's really, um, um, the important thing is that we have from Dima, um, the, the material is, we have such an amount of material and so close and also close connected that we have all these we, can, we have these cross connections, and perhaps we'll talk about this later, um, that it gives us 
um, a, a great impression, uh, a, get a great picture of the system. And we don't have this, like this den density of material we don't have from other temples in Egypt. Um, the, um, the peculiarity, peculiarity is perhaps that this village was abandoned about 250 um, AD. There is a lot of discussion why. So um, was, it, was the water too salty? Uh, was there um, an epidemic? So why? So it, this is. Um, I don't know. Don't don't want to go into detail uh, to this. Um, <laughs> But it was abundant, and um, so this is also why the ruins are still there, the, the houses are still there. It's a pity that they're not um, excavating in the, like in, this, in the settlement itself, but just the temple area, but perhaps, yeah, la perhaps later. So this is one of the um, reasons why we have, um, why, why we have the, uh, so such an um, amount of, of findings of text. So and we have the um, the rubble heap and the, the um, of the of the temple. So uh, Zucker in the 19th century he found where the um, the rubbish was was dumped from the temple. So this was all perhaps in a temp in the temple or in other archives and then went to this um, rubbish heap um, rubble heap um, and um, and I think that their bureaucracy was bigger and more exaggerated than our administration. So this is why we have so much documentary text. There's, there's a challenge. There's a <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so, so you've got your Demotic texts and, and the Greek texts. Um, is there a, a clear sort of pattern as to what kind of material is found in one language and what's found in yeah. the other language? Yeah, yeah. So um, the uh, Greek texts, um, so you had to communicate in Greek um, with the middle administration level and the higher administration level. And of course the Greek person communicate in between in Greek. So this, this is the gr group of Greek texts. And then you have the Demotic text, so this is the commun communication between um, the Egyptian um, inhabitants um, and the, you have the te temple internal. Um, communication. So this is why all what is connected with the temple is in demotic. So there are, um, there are not a lot of studies, but there's one or two studies about um, the temple economy in Dima, but written by Greek papyrologists, and they knew just the the um, the, the Greek texts, of course. Um, so this is why um, this is really a desideratum. Um, so, so the end result, once you started looking at the Demotic texts, that the impact of Greek culture and indeed the Greek administration mm -hmm. is going to turn out to be less than people thought, or more, or different. Mm -hmm. Different. <laughs> <laughs> um, so one type of text we have, and w which is very important for my, my research question, um, is um, uh, Greek finance reports and these temple finance reports um, were written, we think, by the scribe of the priest. So the scribe of the priest was a priest, but he could write Greek. So it was not a to total isolated world, as some Egyptologists um, like to think. Um, and these reports uh, were to, um, ha they have to su submit these reports um, based on their on these account lists, on these long account lists. Um, so they had to um, make clear the authority how many expenses they had, how many revenues they had, so how, how many, m how much money um, and how much m like material went through the temple, um, and. Well, Greek culture, this is um, it's, it's a huge topic, of course. So we have, um, I told you, I told of, of these receipts, and we have some of these demotic written receipts with Greek um, signatures on. But this is temple internal material. So we know that these signatures are 
made by persons, by lesones, by directors of the temple, and they were, of course, Egyptian. And you see, like, the signatures is, like, made by um, first-year students, not, not students, pupils, first-year pupils, just learned Greek. Um, so, um, so you, you, you see, so, so in a way, it was a, a, a closed community, but on the other way, they also adapted um, um, aspects and, and, and um, facets of the Greek culture. Yeah, it's very clear. So, so uh, given there's a shift in the middle of your period from Ptolemaic rule to mm -hmm. Roman rule, if we just had the Demotic text, would we know anything had happened? Um, well, perhaps from Dima, yes. Um, but this, I don't know if there's really, well, um, the, the, the contracts um, show the same formulas um, like in, 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 in Ptolemaic times. I mean, there was no, there was no shift day. So the, the, the language was the, was the same. Also, you know, um, under Roman rule, of course, there was Greek as the language of administration. Um, but we see, well, so one change is that during the Ptolemaic period, we have these contracts with a Greek summary, with the Greek subscription, because um, the um, Greek administration wanted to know what is, in, what is written in this contra contract. And of course, they didn't know demotic, so the, the Egyptians had to write a, a, a Greek summary. Um, and on the, on the um, verso were um, um, witnesses' signatures. And this changed. So from uh, 30 BC, so under Roman rule, with the beginning of the Roman rule, um, we have just um, d all the contracts are written only in demotic. So we think that they were not longer interested in, well, these um, sales of plots of lands or houses. But the. Um, the contract type, so some, some um, so other li others like, um, or other businesses besides house sales were contracted in, uh, were written in Greek. So the administration was more interested in, 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 in these uh, fields of, um, of business. Yeah. Yes. Um, you're very long two meter accounts. Did, did anybody read them? I mean, w w w once somebody fi finished writing it down, w what do we mm -hmm. think happened to these mm -hmm. very long texts? Mm -hmm. Well, they, they were the base for these um, Greek reports. So, um, and in these Greek reports, the, the temple has um, had, to sh had to show um, was what I said about the exp expenses and so on. And it's, um, it's very interesting that when I started to read these accounts one, one and a half years ago, um, so I saw, well, like the scribe of the priest, he got money, he got um, uh, bread, he got oil and so on. Um, and, but the oil and the, and the bread and so on was, um, was counted in, in money, in the money value. So I thought, why? Because the, the, the temple has a bakery, has a brewery, um, they have oil, they have a wine cellar, so they also have had wine fields. Um, so um, why, the, why, the, why the money? And um, so this is one of the cross-references I found in one of the agreements that the scribe of the priest, as the director of the, or the head of the bookkeeping, he had to um, put the expenses in the, so one of his duty is to put all the expenses um, in the account list and for oil, for bread and for wine and for other things um, according to the price of the street. Mm -hmm. So the, the bread was baked in the temple bakery but it, it was, um, in, for one reason, it was important for the temple, for the temple administration to have the, the expense in a money value in their in their accounts, and we think, but it's just a guess, um, that that the um, because the te the Greek temple reports they show uh, also like all the expenses in money, um, and then it said so and all your all the 
or what you have now, you know, as the, the expenses and, and, the, um, and the sum they have left, and this, this sum left, you have to give to the Roman state, so, so the state administration. So we think that this, to, to count bread, wine, oil and so on in money, is perhaps to minimize um, their, their, um, their win. Yeah. 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 So a, a form of sort of civil disobedience. That's very true. Yeah. I, have, I have time for one, one, one more question before yeah. we... Read. So uh, uh, crocodiles. Yeah. Um, so I was <laughs> crocodile-headed God. Uh, do crocodiles crop up a lot within the accounts? Are they... Are, are there to somebody to look after the crocodiles? <laughs> No, we, I mean, we have uh, Strabo and Diodor um, uh, tell us stories about crocodiles and about like holy crocodiles in, in some of the Fayum temples and they, that visitors um, could buy um, honey bread and wine to feed them. We don't have this in, um, in Zognopinus, unfortunately. <laughs> um, um, I was one, one year, one and a half years ago, I was in Zogno Pionese and we found, well, there's over, there are like bones, um, um, crocodile bones, so they were there. Um, the the um, village is now a bit, so it's not so near to the Fayum Lake as it was, so because the Fayum Lake is now a bit smaller. Um, and well, um, but, and we, ha we don't have so many pictures or depiction of Sognopius. So Sognopius was um, depicted with a, um, either with a crocodile uh, body and a falcon head or with an um, anthropomorph with a human body and a falcon head, um, crocodile head and, um, and a human head. But there are very just a few depictions of Sognopius. So um, no, so, and not in the, in, in the accounts, um, I don't think that uh, the crocodile is mentioned, no. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you uh, very much for uh, extremely interesting uh, presentation. I also find there's a possible source of inspirational strategies in dealing with Wellington squares, like you in different languages. <laughs> uh, very good. Um, I have a question on, on my own, maybe if I, if I may jump in. I would just, and I think it's a quick question. Uh, in this uh, legal document that, that you're working, are these all between the temples and someone else, or do we also find a, a contract between two private citizens? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, okay, in which case, then it's my, well, mm -hmm. in case, so was the temple and were the priests acting like notaries or something like that? So why, why would they keep such documents in the temple? Mm -hmm. um, well, with the contracts between individuals, we think they could also come um, originally from an, from an archive in, uh -huh. in a house, from yeah. the settlement. So there were excavations uh, made by the University of Michigan. Um, and in this excavation, um, there were found um, some of some contracts, uh, so in one specific place. And then, well, again, perhaps after 100 or 150 years, some individuals um, just um, uh, cleaned their, their yeah. drawers and then uh, all the contracts went to the rubble. So is it not possible that they were using the temple scribes as you know, providing legal expertise for drawing their contracts, mm. as if it was. Yeah, so, yeah, so the, the, the contracts were written in the temple, so in the temple context, by priests, because yeah. they were the yeah, notaries, exactly. they were the, the scribes, yeah. and they, well, they had, so there was also one temple school, we have, of, uh, we have also an, like teaching um, um, a text from yeah. this temple school, um, and there, there were drafts for a specific contract yeah. formulas, and um, so that the handwriting is it is an Sognopinese handwriting. So if I browse in a collection, I I can say I can tell you this is from Dima because this is really a, a yeah, look, specific yeah. handwriting, and so we think that they try to write like the like the draft. Um, so they copy really the draft. About language use, 
in the documents, is there any evidence that any of the non-priestly caste are able to, to write? That is, do, uh, if there are contracts with bakers and brewers or with dressmakers or whatever, is anybody other than the priest actually ever writing? Because my understanding is that whether or not they, they spoke Egyptian, I mean, the demotic writing script is not something you're going mm -hmm. to easily learn mm -hmm. in you know, mm -hmm. primary school. This, this is this is advanced priests. Yeah. So. yeah. Well, um, we, we usually have no signatures um, um, and no, so in the Ptolemaic period we always had the mention of the, of the scribe mm -hmm. who set up the text. Yeah. Th this we don't have in Roman period, um, so we know there, there, were, there were not notar notaries. Um, in the, sometimes in the Greek text, so there are also bilingual texts, mm -hmm. um, also with these contracts. Loan, loan contract. So there is um, a, a Greek sec section and there's then written and um, XY has written because um, AB cannot write, is not mm -hmm. able to write or is uh, writing slow. Yeah. But then sometimes, <laughs> slowly, but then sometimes you have um, um, a demotic, uh, one line of demotic script, mm -hmm. a demotic s signature and then you see, well, but this party could write, but th it's yeah. meant Greek. So this, this person, yeah. this individual couldn't um, write Greek, but mm -hmm. sometimes demotic. So we think that most of the priests could write demotic, and at one point they also learned mm -hmm. some of them to write Greek. But, but, but it, writing is entirely a priestly activity. I mean, there's no sign of anyone. We, we have no sign. You know, have no sign, <laughs> but, but um, I must admit that w w we have um, attendance lists of all the priests at on one specific day and they, these are 130 priests. No. So I think we think that most of the inhabitants or the male inhabitants of the of Dima were priests. <laughs> <laughs> so not very typical for, for yeah. all Egyptian villages. Do you have any evidence of the, of the translation process that takes place as part of the performance of the of the contract so that the person who doesn't speak Language is, mm -hmm. is, is um, somehow there's an acknowledgement mm -hmm. that they have understood mm -hmm. what they're getting at, mm -hmm. and, and so and so. Yeah. On. Perhaps even in written signatures, that this mm -hmm. double definition. Um, not not in 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 the original contracts, but what we have. And this was my master thesis. Um, uh, I worked on um, on a demotic sales contract, and of this sale contract went um, to a lawsuit, and because the Greek judges they couldn't read and understand demotic so they um, they had to so people had to uh, translate this document in greek mm -hmm. and in fact we have five different greek copies of this one sales document um, and there i um, um, I, I could show how how the um, um, legal formulas were translated from demotic into Greek and also in, in which different ways. So I think they were like dictated. So there were several scribes uh, si sitting in front of someone had the, the docu demotic document and translated yeah. this document to the scribes and they wrote, that, uh, wrote it in, in Greek. But, but you don't have a clue that also that it's part of the performance, that somebody actually, tr somebody actually translates to uh, a relevant party within the within the, the context of the um, making the contract itself. There's no clue of that kind. No. Could the uh, could the uh, um, Egyptians, if my point call it that, in that did they all speak Greek, but there was the Greeks who didn't speak any Egyptian? Is that how it would work like that? A bit of sort of did did allow even get by on, on, on the Greek. Yeah. Well um I think perhaps the situation was a bit like in Switzerland today. I mean, um, that, that people, I mean, uh, when you go to a shop and um, you buy something and, and the shop lady uh, hears you speaking German, then she speaks Germ German. When yeah. she hears French, then oh, she oh, speaks French. Yeah. So, so I think there was... But the Greek administrators couldn't. The Greek administrators not, but um, on, the, like on, the, on the local administration level, these were all yeah. Egyptians. But we don't think that um, no that it was more that the that the Egyptian um, administrators could speak and understand Greek. I think it's probably time is two o'clock. One past two. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.